United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. Sims is not here. Mr. Pashal? Present. Ms. Webster? Here. Mr. McGinnis? Not here. Ms. White? Here. Mr. Renzi? Here. Mr. Sunny Cow? Here. Thank you. Okay. I'll be acting as chair today as Sims is out. Um, item five, agenda modifications. Are there any modifications that were for today? No? Okay. Moving on to number six, approval of the minutes from last week's meeting. I looked them over, but I was not at the meeting, so I won't suggest any changes or addendums to the minutes. Anybody members have changes? No, but I'll approve the minutes. Well, let's see. Do you have someone? I'll make a second. Okay. Barring any other corrections? All right. So we have a motion and second. Okay. Item seven, unfinished business. Item A, pickleball complex. Update. Right. Um, so the city council approved allowing the city manager to finalize the contract and we're working through the final plans at the February 13th city council meeting. Uh, included in your packet, you have the, um, the final quote that was presented before city council for the pricing. And also, um, and there's some discussion about the location of the pickleball complex at the last meeting. So I pulled an image off of Google Earth and, and laid out the, the proposed site that we're going to move forward with for the pickleball complex at the airport. Also, we're working the construction services agreement um, is with the city attorney at this point. Uh, as soon as he gets finalized, as soon as we finalize and get approval for that uh, document, we will send it over to the contractor and, and begin to move forward with the contractual agreements within this project. We had a conference call between the contractor and the engineering firm on Friday to make sure the details are being worked out. And uh, like I said, once we receive the signed agreement back from the contractor, we'll be ready to proceed um, with our with the construction and notice to proceed to the contractor. Yes, sir. I have a question. Um, looking at this, it says the total proposed cost for the portion of the construction is two hundred fifty-two thousand four hundred fifty. So. But it was budgeted for 409. Yes, ma'am. So just to clarify that, um, this portion of the the 252,000 is for the construction of the pickleball courts. It includes the sidewalks uh, around the, the the property and also the parking lot. That's what totals 252,000. On top of that, we have the restroom facility, which had already been discussed, which was approximately $60,000. And then we have um, plumbing that has to go in, electrical that has to go in, and landscaping as well. That will all be factored into a total proposed uh, price of 409000 So the fencing is currently in that 252, correct? Because oh, that's what's on the uh, study that was given. Yes, so the fencing is, is included in that, the fencing around the pickleball um, court banks that will be installed. So the other costs that are not reflected here would be nets, posts, and that? All of that's included in this. Um, what's not included in the quote that you have in front of you is the restroom facility, which um, is going to be a prefab facility that's already been approved. Um, plumbing, we have to get a, a lift station in, installed. We have to get plumbing connected. Electrical has to be done as well by another, by another contractor. And then landscaping. Um, has to be included. So all of that is separate from the quote that you see in front of you um, for 252000 And electrical is considered as far as laying the wires and the groundwork as opposed to then the actual posting and the lighting that would be tied into that wiring, right? That's, that's a separate cost? That's correct. So in the, in the quote that's in front of you, it does include running the conduit underneath the pickleball courts because that needed to be done now, so the contractor is going to go ahead and run that conduit for us. Um, we will have to hire an electrician to come in and hook up the wiring for the restroom facility and for a couple other lights that we're going to have installed and a camera 
That will all take place during this phase. The lighting phase of actually lighting the parking lot and the courts will be a phase two project um, once we complete this process. But the conduit will be in place to install those. Okay. How big um, of a parcel is this? Um, we are, it's, it's about three acres that we are, we're going forward with um, as far as this uh, piece of property here that we're leasing from the airport. And do we have, once the courts are in, do we have other rooms around the, the courts if we needed to add any other things in the future or not? So to the south, there is a good amount of property to the south. However, that is um, light industrial possibilities going forward. So I know that there is that possibility that it could be on the south side of the pickleball complex. Okay, but the three acres is pretty much consumed for the pickleball, the bathrooms, the parking. Yes, ma'am. Okay, but maybe in the future adding on to the south if we add any other kind of recreational. That could be activities. a potential possibility okay. um, within the future. Good. I have one question. Yes, ma'am. So it looks like there's a golf course. The golf course is right there. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be like some kind of nets or something so that the balls don't go? I don't really. I don't golf. Yeah. So, so the I don't location know, of the balls pickle, everywhere. Yeah, the location of the pickleball complex is is a pretty good distance away from the, the mm -hmm. golf course, the green okay. that's there, yeah. and um, on that hole, the driving, which is typically when you would see balls flying over and everything, is a good distance away. It's a par five hole. That would prevent it shouldn't be a problem so when you're going s south on these three acres looking at this map what is the dirt road that's going in there to the south of that is there any kind of facility in there so this google earth image is from um, a few years mm -hmm. ago so currently what it is is it's all just graded grass there's nothing nothing currently there so it's all open until you get further all until you get all the way to the canal on the far south end, oh, okay. um, there's nothing on that property. All right, thank you. Okay, I have a question regarding um, number 10 under the court construction demographics. <clears throat> Saying they'll flood the courts with water, repair any defects per ASBA and USTA guidelines. So one question is, is there any type of drainage that's going to be incorporated in the laying of the courts? And then two, when you f flood that in order to see what, you know, the, the grade and the level that it is in that contract, repair defects. So if you had structural defects in flooding the court, right, and laying down a concrete slab, the difference between minor cracks and repairs versus having structural damage on trying to see how sound that concrete is, that might be one thing that I'd like to see kind of merited out in a contract to say, you know, you do, you do, you're flooding it to see, to test, but if the test goes really bad and you had really bad structural damage to the slab, getting that to be re-poured or redone versus just doing minor crack damage. And I bring that up because we faced a similar situation when we put in the uh, skate park and that we had damage to the concrete at the time that never ever fully got repaired to starting off from, from square one where we paid all this money to redo the skate park and then right from the get-go we had a substandard skate park from a failed concrete uh, implementation. So I, I just like to somehow put that in there or call that out as to, to spell that out as to what is acceptable damage and repair based on a brand new facility. Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll just clarify, there will be no drainage and, and this facility is asphalt, it'll be asphalt overlay, not concrete. Okay. Um, so the cracking and such should be prevented. Um, but basically there is, a, there will be a slope um, and it will drain, it's a slight slope, it's you know one or two percent grade that will drain towards the middle, in between the two sets of quartz. Okay. Um, so it will all go one way. Their, their flooding of courts is a typical tennis um, pickleball installation of what they do regardless of whether it's new construction or as you'll see later on um, in resurfacing of courts, they do the same thing. So with these, the asphalt should, will be cured for 30 days before it goes down. So there should, it should have already been addressed immediately as soon as the asphalt is poured 
with the grade and any issues that come forward with that. Um, it is going on a lime rock base so and a primer or coat in between the lime rock and the asphalt. So it all should be addressed prior to ever getting to the point where they, they flood the courts and look for, for defects since it is new construction. All right. And what's the estimated time frame on the usage of a, of a court? So brand new asphalt court should last you how many years in normal utilization? So a typical resurfacing of tennis courts lifespan is, is somewhere in the range of, you know, three to seven years depending on, you know, exactly how much usage you get. So I would anticipate it's going to be the same with these pickleball okay. courts. Um, so we won't have to really come in and strip it and do everything over again. It'll just be applying a resurfacer and, and coloring the courts similar to what we're going to do with the tennis courts uh, coming up in our project this year. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Okay. Next item, item B, scoreboards for Barber Street. Uh, we discussed this at the last meeting a little bit. Um, we did have the new scoreboard in, uh, delivered shortly after the last meeting. It was installed on field one. So currently, as of today, fields one, two, and four are working. We have tried numerous times. We've been on the phone back and forth with Electromec, who is the manufacturer of the previous scoreboards that were there, to try and fix the problem on field three. Um, they've informed us that, you know, they basically ran out of options to provide us with anything that's going to fix that problem. We, um, they do not manufacture parts for those scoreboards anymore. They're, they're just that dated out. And so on fields one and two, we have Nevco scoreboards, which is, um, an, it's, it's a scoreboard type brand that's been in place for many years. Um, so we have those two new scoreboards there. Field four works. We have Electromech there. And field three is the uh, field that currently does not work. And at this time, you know, we've exhausted all of our opportunities to repair that scoreboard. So, so with three not working then, is the city going to replace it? What are we doing at this point then? So currently we do not have plans to replace it. That's why I'm bringing it up as a discussion point amongst the committee to uh, you know, inform you all of where we currently stand with our scoreboards at Barber Street. What kind of cost is this scoreboard? Uh, we, I would anticipate it being about $2,827, which is what we paid for the one we just installed on Field 1. And last discussion we were talking about is that the city responsibility to replace that, not Little League, right? So we have not, we have not worked through the entire documents and everything like that with redoing a um, contract agreement with Little League and, and clarifying exactly what the responsibilities are. I know that was brought up at the last meeting that we're, that's something that we're working through. We're trying to, you know, to come to that agreement, but at this time it's kind of a gray area with who the responsibility falls on. And if it came out of Parks and Rec, it could come out of Parks and Rec, and if not, would, where would the monies come from? If the city didn't pay for it, it would be the responsibility of the Little League if they wanted a new scoreboard. Okay, so it's either we pay for it, Parks and Rec, or the Little League? That's correct. Go. Cool. Okay. So field three is the softball field. That's the field that all the girls play on, softball. Um, I think that we need to pay for a scoreboard for the field. If we can come up with $400,000 for a pickleball court, then we can come up with $2,827 for a um, yeah. scoreboard. And I would, I, would vote I think, I, yeah. like I said before, I signed that lease mm -hmm. and it was never, ever, for the whole time that I've ever been involved with the league, which is 15 years maybe, um, we never had to do anything with the scoreboard. Well, it, when does when does the season start actually? Uh, they started. Okay, so if we were to go ahead today and vote that we would like to have that money come out of Parks and Rec, but that the city would go ahead and keep working on the wording on that so we do have it actually changed then, who's gonna pay for who? Remember we were gonna go through that. I, I still think that um, you know, when a, league, when a league is small, and they're small right now, and it's, it's not a big league, they don't have a lot of I mean, it's not um, a lot of money going on up there. So I don't know how they can maintain those, those things. 
But to do properly. that, we have to get the wording changed, though, so that it is in there, so that it's set from now on that that yeah, who's going to take a care lease, of that. Uh, maybe the renewal of the lease or an amendment to the lease or something like that. Yeah, so that contract will be adjusted before the the current um, time frame of it runs out. It will be amended. You know, as I stated at last meeting, Little League is uh, in agreement with us revising that document. So it's just a matter of revising, actually going through the process, revising the document, and we will renew it prior to the end date of the lease, the current lease. So it will be renewed prior to that. So could we go ahead tonight and actually? Um, well, I would make that motion, motion to, that. to pay that twenty-eight hundred dollars mm -hmm. so that scoreboard does get taken care of, and then when the lease gets renewed and the wordings are changed, then that can be dealt with. But I think we need to go ahead and do that. Well, Bill, one of the one of the um, volunteers out there paid himself for a scoreboard, um, and then they shared in costs of the other one. So the city's paid for half of a scoreboard, right? Yes, that's right. Because the existing on field four is still working. Yes, field one, field four was the scoreboard we just moved from field one. So um, if you understand the fields, when you walk in to the ball field, mm -hmm. on the right is field four. Next to that, going forward, is three. Two is on the left of the concession stand, and one is the first, one. The mm -hmm. first one on the left. Mm -hmm. So um, younger kids play on one and two. Mm -hmm. Four is usually for senior baseball, and three is all of softball now. Mm -hmm. Well, I would move that we put the money, that we take the money out of Parks and Rec and out of the <coughs> that fund money that we have for all parks, hanging out. not just for the, the certain particular neighborhood parks, but uh, would that be that twenty thousand yeah, dollars that we have? That's can correct. Can we do that? Joanne, you want to make a motion? I would make a motion that we um, pay for the scoreboard for field three um, and get that going. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Okay. Bert, thank you. Um, there's something else. And Bert, let me tell you why. Okay. I oppose. We have a, um, a handicap park or handicap playground that's been taken away. <clears throat> it's been brought about building one that hasn't been talked about or built yet. Um, I, I like to see something done with a uh, handicap park. Can I ask, though, really, uh, and I understand you, you oppose and you have that right, but what does that have to do with, with the baseball field? That should be something maybe that you could bring up at a, put, get on the agenda so that we could talk about maybe getting another it's been talked handicap about. park. It's been talked about. Okay. And uh, it's been forgotten about. Okay. So, okay. I mean, I, I'm just, I'm not really opposing, I'm just saying there's other, <clears throat> other things I think we should, we've already talked, this should have been taken care of and talked about and discussed before uh, okay. the baseball so no, field. No problem. So there's been, a, there's been a motion seconded and approved. Uh, well, it doesn't any make, other, any uh, other I'm an out so there's a little bit difference. Yeah, I know, but any other time, just going forward. Put in a new new agenda item with with further research and other. I'll, I'll just explain why I yeah. oppose it. That's all. Well, I encourage you to put in another another uh, motion for the members to discuss. All right, uh, item C, adopt the park. Yes. Yeah, so at the last committee meeting, uh, I brought forward you know the discussion about adopt the park program amongst the committee members. So here tonight, I sent out a list um, via email to each member that lists all of the parks within the city. Um, that are active and, and actually posted within the city. So I uh, just want to have a, you know have the board have a discussion regarding this. And if if you so please, then you identify which parks each member gets at this time. Um, that's up to you all to discuss. Well, I would love to do this, and I will claim the Park Street Sports Complex and Hardy Park if that's okay. And which one? Hardy. Oh, that's a nice little park. Yeah. And Hardy. And the Bar Street Sports Complex. But there's about 30 parks, so, you know. But we have a list of 16. Are we in agreement that these are all the parks under the city? So, we start so the this? list of 16 that you have are the actual parks that have amenities and actually have walking trails or playgrounds. 
we do have passive parks that some of them aren't even identified as parks. Mm -hmm. I didn't include those on the mm -hmm. list um, just for the simple fact that once we get it over and we start to spread out that many, then it's, I wanted to concentrate on these 16 and then mm -hmm. Through our science study, we're going to start to identify more parks as we go along sure. for the public, but those are the 16 that are identified within the city. And might I, so if, if we're looking at 16 and we're... There's seven. And we need to make sure we have other Chair. people here, this, you know, if we're looking at maybe two parks per person to start mm -hmm. to try to break this up. We can yes. assign the rest. That's my, that's my suggestion, is mm -hmm. two, two parks per, per person. So is everybody okay with... Mm -hmm. Ms. Webster's uh, mm -hmm. asking for Barbara and Harvey. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. 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 All right. Anybody else have a? Yes. I would like Easy Street, <coughs> and I could do the Garden Club. Joanne White. Okay. If no one minds, I don't mind doing shoe, um, stormwater. I'm in there all the time, and. Um, the Schumann Drive Park, the one with the tennis courts and the basketball courts, the ones opposed. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, I would like Riverview if no one wants it. I've got Riverview now. I yeah. can keep Riverview and the dog park. So okay. he's been doing that for a hundred years. Okay. So <laughs> Jim and like I Riverview would, and dog. Park. I have people that comes to me with. Yeah. I know. I, I would support that. Yeah. No problem. Um, so which one are you? Are you taking um, Riverdale? Yeah. Riverdale. Mm -hmm. I'm at a loss right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's historical? I, I had a question mark next to that. Historical is it? It's just a a, a small pond that has a water fountain that's uh, okay. heading down Schumann back towards US One. Um, it's not the, Schumann. Yeah, you cross the. Um, Okay. The railroad tracks mm -hmm. in the I don't know if we need side. anything there, though. Do you? Is mm -hmm. uh, Winninger considered a park on Barber Street? I'm sorry? I think that's Winninger. county. Is that how you say it? Winninger? I think that's county behind Pelican Island, right? Uh, on Barber. It's, I'm not it's familiar not, with that It park. doesn't even look. It's in the shambles. It's behind the Pelican Island School? Yeah. Yeah. It's just like scrub, actually. Yeah, little, yeah. Fall apart type of. Uh, I can look into that one for you. Are um, you looking for some parks? Set Friendship Park is something that. Yeah, I mean, that, friendship. That's right here. So that's something that does need eyes yeah. on as far and as Filbert. water utilization. And Filbert's a good one, yeah, too. Yeah, I'll be happy to take that. Okay. Friendship? Where's mm -hmm. it on this street here? Right here behind us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Friendship. So it entails the, you know, because you've got the utilization of the Boys and Girls Club and then the tennis courts and okay. so this, this area right here is a. Much frequent in parks. So friendship is a good one. And George, how about George? And George. You want to do friendship and George? George, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Where's George? Um, right on, right on um, Barbara. Barbara. The Barbara Street. Oh, okay. Yeah. Also, okay. Um, and, and can we just assign the others out? You're going on Barbara. Oh yeah. Oh, I um, mean, oh, that's so that nice. Might I suggest a break in there? That's yeah. It. Oh no. Just Putting in there, the people that are not present, give them an opportunity to look through the list of what's left to volunteer, yeah. as opposed to assigning, so that the chances of you incorporating and doing your park, as opposed to, you know, if the ones that are left, if something is right around the corner from somebody that's not here, mm -hmm. as opposed to being farther away, we'd probably get better eyes on the park. That would be my suggestion. So, Brian, do you mind in an email just whatever's left? emailing the other members that are not here and asking mm -hmm. if they'd like to choose from the ones that are, that are left? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll just send a follow-up email giving them their basically what parts okay. that are left so they can decide. So then at our future meetings then we'll be coming back and if we have any kind of input about the park needs or good things, bad things, and comments then? Yeah, under committee, committee member matters. Okay. We, can, we can all the parks are ours. I mean, it's Correct. not... Mm -hmm. It's got to assign one doesn't mean you can't say something about mm -hmm. your park. Mm -hmm. uh, I do all the parks in the city. Mm -hmm. um, if I see a problem, or right. when people come to me with suggestions to improve something or something that's wrong, mm -hmm. uh, and the public can also, you know, the public's a big part of what goes on in our parks too, because we, we have over 30 parks in the city. That's a lot of parks. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a pickleball thing coming up. 
course. So that's another area that has to be watched. Uh, yeah. So. And another item off of this, I know I still have my, we had business cards made for those people on the Parks and Recs Committee that when you're out around at the park as opposed to wearing a shirt, I never wear my shirt, but I do give out the card. And it's just another way of saying. Yeah, yeah, I brought that up once. Did you ever get cards? Well, I brought it up, and they said they never did do that. That they never did it? Well, Margarita. Well, they, I know they did do it, and it was a big help because mm -hmm. someone in the park over here, you know, here's, yeah. uh, it's a great right way on. to communicate with the public. Well, I brought it up about us having cards, and no, no, we never did do well, that. Let's go for ahead, Brian. Is there a possibility for us to do cards for new members of the board? I'll, I'll do the research and just make sure there's nothing within the city and within our, our policies as far as board members go yeah. that prevents it. If there is nothing that prevents it from happening, then we can gladly go forward with that. Well, this was done years ago, and we've gotten new people, and they don't know Thanks, how and what. I saw yeah. mine. If you still have yours, so we're looking at. I don't have mine. Go ahead. Right. So, and I'll send a follow-up email with the answer as to whether we're going forward with business cards or not. And if we are, then I just ask that each member responds with whether you want your email address or a phone number on it, what information you would like to be on it. I will just need responses from everyone sure. for that. And I'll, I can uh, I'll send you a screenshot of mine. Can we what have does it even look like? It was can just... we have them put your phone number and email on our card? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Any other items under Adopted Park? Yeah. Okay. Item D, committee member discussion, park improvements for current fiscal year. So I, let, I, I included this on the unfinished business, um, and I'll more likely include it on every single agenda item or agenda going forward each month. Just to give you an opportunity that if you've gone through your parks and you've noticed items that need to be addressed, then you can have a general discussion amongst the board members as to whether or not you want to approve to, to spend money on that item as you did tonight on the scoreboard for field three. Um, but I will continue to put it on there and just give you an opportunity to have that discussion at each meeting. Jim, do you have anything? Uh, on the uh, improvements? Mm -hmm. uh, for current fiscal year. To just the uh, handicap part for physical year, that's all. We did kind of drop that, didn't we? Yeah, it's and been. It, we had it. Yeah, do I you know the history of that? Yeah. I, I do have a brief overview of some of the history of it that it used to be located behind the police department. And uh, there has been some discussion in the past about building a new one and uh, doing it back here at Friendship Park. Mm -hmm. uh, so if that's something that the committee wishes to kind of proceed I, and start the discussions back up on that, then I can start that process as well. I talked to the woman that runs the um, tennis court back here, and she said, believe it or not, that got used quite a bit, the handicap uh, park. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we had already we made need, We need, needs to be somewhere where there's a bathroom for the... So we've got a few parks, uh, and a, the, the dog park has a bathroom. Uh, the pickleball area is going to have a bathroom. I mean, there's, so it has to have a bathroom. There's Hardy Park. So, you know, I think the main thing would be a bathroom. Mm -hmm. uh, Isn't there a lot of room back there? I thought no. we had picked this as a back yeah. area. That's where it was supposed there's to go. There's a restroom back there and right well, there. Well, since the pickleball court's not going back here. Right. Well, that's where it was talked about, was going back here. But it's been forgotten about, yeah. and nobody's, I don't know. So we'll pick up the ball, and I don't, I think, I think we had talked about putting it back here. So if it's something we can finish that was an ongoing project and it got dropped. Okay, I'll do some research on it, and I'll follow back up with the okay. committee on that item. Well, uh, handicap kids need to park. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, if we can, like, like Joanne said, you know, build a pickleball court. I mean, come on. Let's mm -hmm. <laughs> build a, a handicap theory for the people. Um, that's it. Okay. Joanne? Um, we had talked about the shade, um, I don't know what you call it, the shade things for the baseball. Canopies? Yes. Whatever happened with that? Is that on Those the budget? Were on the budget for this and year. And then they moved them, and I don't know where they went. And that's to another way that we've talked about that we had wanted. Um, There's to supposed to be sh the shade overhead in um, the picnic tables. Right, and I'd like to see that back on there because that needs to get done. That that discussion and that appropriation should be in the minutes because, yeah, because it was voted on and budgeted, budgeted and then 
um, things happen. It was budgeted out, and then they moved it off. Yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm as you all know, I came on board in December, so I'm not well, aware of exactly what happened sure, right. um, with all that, but it's something that I can look at. Um, I have a note to look at it for potential budgeting for next year already from previous discussions, mm -hmm. um, so it is something that I can look look at. Going and forward. that's good for things that we've already talked about and discussed, just keep making sure they get taken care of and finished. Yes, and as we just um, started to go off topic a little bit, but we are starting our, our little bit of our budget process with capital improvement projects. Requests have to be in uh, within the next few weeks. So as, I, as those items come forward, I will keep the board informed on what we're requesting in our capital improvement projects and uh, stuff to that nature that, that we'll go forward with. Okay, that's all I had on that. Do I have anything? No. Nope. I'm, I'm good yet. Okay. Because there's still that. No. To... So we were going to, when we talked about the agendas, the date set, I think what we decided at the last meeting that is if we don't have something that's coming up on a meeting, we cancel the meeting. Mm -hmm. But the dates are set for the year. So if we don't have anything that's in discussion or needs to be taken care of, then you're going to just cancel That is correct. The okay. Yes. But I had one uh, item. Uh, we talked about the Schumann parks being resurfaced. So one of the questions that um, came up from the pickleballers out there is if those lines would then be continue to be redrawn for the for courts five and six at Schumann. They currently have lines for pickleball and there's requesting from pickleballers that it continue to have striping for pickleball. Uh, one of the ideas is that if lighting isn't going to come in until phase two for the courts at the airport that there still would then be a place for the pickleballers to play with lights. And then it also just gives another overspill for different people to pickleball. Yeah. Um, so just in the resurfacing, just what, it, what the idea is behind so in the, those in, lines. So in the quote, the proposal that will be going before uh, council on March 13th, it does include repainting the pickleball lines on course five and six. Okay. So that will be included. All right, and then another small, uh, improvement would be the basketball backboards at Schumann and then I can't speak to Barber Street because they haven't seen them but at a minimum they need some TLC uh, and having had the coach wreck there on the backboards as they are they're on a metal post and if you've ever played you know if you hit the ball it'll kind of shake and vibrate and so from the back end of the metal pole to the backboard is a is a brace that minimizes that shaking so two of the four backboards have that currently missing and then they're kind of rusted out it would i don't know what the cost would be to see what it would take to replace the boards to make something that's more square um at, at some point you know they're going to meet, need to be replaced the actual court for the basketball court at Schumann isn't really that bad but just wondering right now what the resurfacing was were we just talking about the tennis courts, or are we talking about the tennis court and the basketball court all at the same time? Had that even been discussed? So this project is is specifically for the tennis, tennis courts. Court. Okay. It does not include resurfacing for the basketball courts. That's fine. They're not in disrepair. But the backboards, if we could look into what potentially would be the cost of updating or refurbishing or just improving the backboards. All four of the rims are there and work but it's the it's the actual boards themselves that it's yes i can research that for you all and, and get you the pricing on what it would be cost to replace the backboards and if it's you know if it's something that we need to budget for in another fiscal year we can definitely look at fabricating brackets um onto the back to get us through right. until we can um replace them with okay. the budget yeah that's definitely if we had to do that that money could come out of the zone area then yeah, just again, yeah. not knowing what you know what we're talking about mm -hmm. cost-wise. Right. We address that based on the zone and the park. Okay. Uh, moving on, public input. At this time, is there any input from the public? If so, come forward, state your name. Okay. New business. Any items of new business? Okay. Staff matters. Item A. I have. Uh, well, I, I jotted a few notes down uh, about uh, 
Riverview Park. Okay, so that would come under your committee member matters, whereas new business would be putting in like a proposal okay. towards something. That's the distinction okay. between new business and then okay. just status of your parks. Okay. Okay. So yeah. staff matters, uh, current project update. Uh, so each meeting on the agenda, I'm going to try to provide you with updates on the projects that we're currently um, working on. And, and these projects are not all inclusive. They're going to include some of the major ones that are happening in our parks and um, that are, you know, financially costing the city um, a decent amount of money. So I just want to provide updates. The Barber Street football building uh, project has been is complete. Um, we received the final permitting. Everything was approved on Friday. So that facility, restroom facility did open up for um, football, the football program to utilize on Saturday. Um, we're still waiting on the, just the final cost to come in from the contractor to see where we are with that budget. I know within the uh, Rec Impact Fund, uh, there was budgeted a little over $101,000 for that project. So once we get those final numbers, then I'll provide you all with an update on where we finalized uh, that pricing with that project. Uh, Barber Street Baseball, uh, Little League did have their opening night on Friday night. Um, we had staff out there doing some pressure cleaning and, and trying to clean up the facility as much as we could in preparation for that event. Uh, I was out there personally and, and it was a great um, showing from the community and the Youth Athletic League uh, within Little League to put on that opening ceremony. And it was great to see all the young kids out there and enjoying themselves. And that's what, you know, Parks and Recreation is all about. Um, we're continuing to work on those baseball and softball fields on a daily basis. Uh, I have two staff members that are continuing to um, do the work at those fields, edging the infields, um, adding, adding clay, and just getting those fields in better condition with some turf management programs as well. So we're, hoping, we're hopeful that you know, as we continue on a long-term plan for the next year or so, to really get that turf on those, field, on those athletic fields uh, up to the standards and where they where it should be for for the kids to enjoy and really showcase what Sebastian has to offer for athletics. <clears throat> uh, Schumann tennis courts. This item, as I've mentioned a couple of times tonight, is going before council on March 13th. Um, and speaking with the contractor, once everything is finalized with this project and we get all of our contracts finalized with them, uh, we will go forward with scheduling it. In a couple of discussions I've had with the contractor. Uh, and just to clarify, it is the same contractor that is building the pickleball courts. So they're going to be doing both of them. Uh, we've had discussions about whether we do it before pickleball, after pickleball, or during the 30-day um, when they can't do anything to the asphalt courts at the pickleball complex. Um, whether it falls within the same time frame as the pickleball complex is still to be seen. He has you know, commented that it's going to be a separate group that he can bring over to do the tennis courts. So we may, I'll get with the tennis club and we'll, we may do that a little bit sooner than we had anticipated, you know, to go ahead and move that project forward. So at the next meeting, I should have an update as to where we stand with that project and a potential time frame for getting that done. If I could just put in a comment that we try to communicate that as much as possible to the community, knowing, giving them advance warning of when that will take place, whether that be even signs posted at Schumann Park well in advance of saying, you know, the park's going to be cut, shut down for whatever, a week, 10 days to 14 days, however long, or 30, whatever it takes, that we at least give them two months notice that that's coming so that... Yeah, so as soon as we have the contract and we get on the, the contractor schedule, we'll post signage, we'll put it on our website, we'll get it out as much as we can to the public and make sure that, you know, we've done our part to, to let them know that the courts will be closed for a two to three week period while they're being resurfaced. Perfect. Uh, and then my la another project update is park signage. Um, we have received the, the scope from the consultant. Um, we're looking at you know, going through and, and creating a uniform sign that would easily identify all of our parks within the city from a standpoint. We're going to have three sign designs. We're going to have one that's just a basic sign, one that's a sign with a marquee, and then one that is um, uh, also acknowledges if we have like a FERDAP grant or some grant money that was used towards the, the park. So those would be our three identifying signs that we would put throughout our park system. Um, so as soon as we, we've, they've asked for some clarification on a couple of things within the scope. So we're working to provide that. I'm working with Lisa from Community Development um, on this project to provide the clarification back to them. We should have some pricing 
from our consultant um, on the park signage study. And the uh, last one is Riverview Park. Um, we're the, the same consultants going we're looking to do a master plan of Riverview Park. That's gonna as soon as we get the final scope of services from them, I'll share it with the entire committee. And uh, once they we have their scope, they'll also include the pricing. We're anticipating both of these uh, scopes and pricing to be finalized within the next two to three weeks, uh, so we can move forward with those as well. Okay. And then you want to move to your social media policy item B. Yeah, so um, the clerk's office uh, sent out, an, I don't know if you got it in letter form or if you got it via email, but a new social media policy that um, addresses specifically the city's boards and committees. Um, so I just ask to make sure you read through that policy. If you have any questions, you can contact um, our city clerk, or if you're, you know, you're fine with what's stated in that policy, please sign it and get it back to us as soon as possible. It is something where they were just trying to clarify what you know, the responsibilities of boards and committees are as far as social media is concerned to make sure we don't, we're not having issues with um, you know, social media posts from board members. Okay. Moving on to committee member matters. Start in, Jimmy, anything? I got a couple of things. Okay. Uh, Riverview Park, the, uh, the Pete Harris uh, plaque, it's um, the, the glue is completely disintegrated. Uh, the plaque is just sitting there. So I mean, someone could. Um, it's happened a couple of times. Someone has stolen it, and it's about four or five hundred bucks to replace it. So if you get some glue down there and re before someone takes it, uh, I think what the problem is the chemicals they're using in the uh, fountain to keep it clean. I think the chemicals are eating the glue. Um, and also, the uh, I brought up the uh, playgrounds being dark. And I think uh, a suggestion, the, uh, the volleyball courts, the, the lights there for the volleyball courts, all we'd have to do is just add a light on top of the post. Instead of having one light, then you'd have two, have, have a light facing the playground equipment be an easy fix and I think it would be uh, um, more light and safer for the, the kids. If you go down at night you can see uh, an understanding. It. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of dark and just to make it safe. That's it. Okay. Okay. I have a question for Joanne. When you do the um, Barber Street Complex as your park, are you doing the skateboard? Uh, at Barber Street, it, it would, it is included, but you could, I mean, it could be a separate item. Because I'd like you, to see it be a separate, I mean, at, at least address somewhere, because I think it's something we need to just keep an eye on. Hmm? It has fallen by the wayside, in my opinion. Okay, so maybe somebody needs to use that as, maybe that needs to be, do you want to put that on yours, or is that too much? For Bar Barber Street, um, you I can check it out. I'm just not familiar with what's involved <laughs> in the skate park. You know, what do you think, Greg? As far as conditions go, yeah, it's just a matter of looking at it. I know that we we do feedback. employ somebody there to collect money money for them going in. It'd be interesting to see, you know, what our utilization is of that park. My kids were using it. They're out of that age where they mm -hmm. go there. I know that there was different preferences. Some people were really upset when we switched from the boards mm -hmm. to the concrete. Mm -hmm. Part of that was you know, the way that that park went in. It wasn't exactly what everybody wanted. And it's an active park. Right. So it, I think it there's, needs to There's needs that were identified for that park, same as all the other parts mm -hmm. of it. It needed a sunshade. It mm -hmm. needed picnic tables, mm -hmm. things that we had asked for. And uh, you know, mm -hmm. we got to that point where we had several actionable items for the agenda and the budget got pulled out to go toward other things and things that we had allocated seemed to have fallen by the mm -hmm. wayside. So yeah. that park as a park would be interesting just if we're looking at things and having kind of a refreshed effort at upgrading and looking at our parks and, and saying what the status of Maybe it, that should be, be good to, maybe to it wouldn't hurt if we were there. there. It's just well, a matter of yeah, I can do that, but maybe if we all got together up there sure. on Saturday. And looked around. Right. And the people who work there also 
can easily tell you yeah. what's going on, who comes. So I can talk to them. Yeah, I mean, I, I, can, I can provide the committee with an update on where we're looking, what we're doing as far as revenue within that park. I'll, I'll gladly send that to you all so that you're aware of the usage that has taken place over the last few years at that park. But what I'm wondering is, do we need someone to take that just as a separate park? That's up to you. I, I think you know, if you're walking around and you're just there, there, there and they get feedback, feedback. Yeah. Park. Yep. Um, pass your card out and get feedback. They can call you anytime. <laughs> Cater pager. Did you have anything? Could I add something about the uh, the Riverview Park? Mm -hmm. Not to step on your toes or anything. Oh. Well, like but I said, we're all on the committee. You know, I'm here once or twice a week walking my dog. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. So I noticed the, uh, the sidewalks. They look dingy and out of whack, you know. Uh, they've been sanded in some spots. There's cracked corners off. Uh, I'm just thinking maybe the whole thing could be power washed and just repaired a little. Make it look, it, that's the go-to park. There's all these events there. And you walk in there and it just looks. You're talking about the inner loop to the actual park? Yes, okay. the sidewalk within the park mm -hmm. where all the events are taking place. Just spruce it well, up. They were going to replace all the sidewalks not so, so many years ago. They was talking about replacing the whole, all the sidewalks. Well, but apparently yeah, they got. This would be an easy fix, and maybe it would look better if something could be done about it. Yeah. You know? Well, it's the trees bringing up the. Oh, so, the roots. Like, yeah. yeah it's, it's the roots. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, there's been uh, people that's tripped on. <coughs> Yeah. Uh, I mean, actually gotten hurt from the raised uh, yeah. Yeah. sidewalk. And there's a lot of people there with, I mean, hundreds of people using yeah. it. But as long as you got the trees, you're, you're, even if you replace it, you still have that, the roots pushing up the sidewalk, so. Uh, but as long as the city addresses it and keeps grinding it and uh, what, pressure washing it. Uh, well, what do you think about pressure washing it so it looks a little cleaner? Well. I tried to get them to pressure wash that concrete garbage can some time ago. <laughs> and you're right. It, it's a park that's it's Riverview. It's that's a, our main park. That's your go-to park. And it should be yeah. uh, kept clean and yeah. uh, uh, picnic tables should be sometimes pressure washed. Uh, Do we have anybody that's a, is is there actually somebody a schedule? that does those things. I know on Easy Street we need it because of the ducks, the, the tables and sidewalks. Yes, yeah, so, you know, that's one of the things that I'm working on is developing a schedule. Um, I don't know if any of you have noticed, but we've gone around and done the garden club fencing, um, Riverview fencing, the wooden fencing down there at Riverview and Twin Piers, that area. We went around this uh, last week and pressure washed all the playgrounds within the city. Okay. So a lot of those things are being addressed as we continue to go forward. I will state that we, we had to rent a large water tank because a lot of those facilities don't have water access. Uh, so we did rent one of those because ours within the city was broken. We've since gotten a new one within the city. So I'll definitely add the sidewalks within Riverview Park to be done you know, on a recurring basis as we go through our schedule. Um, but if, yeah, if, you, if you're in that area, look at the, the fencing and garden club fencing looks a lot better. And we've done quite a few of those things as we're going along. So we'll continue to add, you know, sidewalks within the review part to that. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it's always in use and mm -hmm. people talk about it, yeah. And Easy Street Park was one that was supposed to be on a schedule because of okay. the ducks, My the tables like and Jake, benches. The fountain in Riverview, we, we kept that clean for a couple of years and also we pressure washed the concrete pad there. So we, um, yeah, Riverview needs some attention. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's one of the things behind the master plan is, we're, you know, hopefully we get some suggestions and we can start to, to rejuvenate the entire park, you know, the grass, the trees, start a succession planning and how we're going to maintain the trees and the sidewalk's going to be looked at, the electrical outlets, it'll look at the entire park within that master plan. And uh, so I don't, I'm hesitant to, you know, make some major changes and say, let's go to redo the sidewalk when we're waiting for the master plan once we get those final recommendations back from them. Um, we can do some short-term fixes with pressure cleaning and cleaning the place up, yeah. and, and all those things hopefully will be addressed as we look at the master plan and what the you know the timetable is going forward with that once it's finalized. Thank you. Yep. Do you have anything else, Doctor? 
No, that was my main gripe today. And I just <laughs> want to thank you, Mr. Benton, for getting back to us quickly on things that we mentioned in the last meeting. It was nice to get those things ahead of time before this meeting to be able to have them. And also, I like your title of Leisure Services Director. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you're welcome, and I'll continue to try and communicate as much as possible and provide updates on um, the varying things that you all are bringing up. Joanne? Yeah, yeah. I've got a turn. I, um, I got another question. The, uh, uh, the water park? When we took down the uh, shade shelter there, have, have they determined where they're going to put that? That item is something that once those, they, they had to cut the bases on those. So right. in order to, you know, put them, put them back up and be able to reutilize those poles, we'd have to go to an engineer to have them sign off on re-engineering that stuff um, for the safety factor. Right. So, you know, at this time, we currently do not have plans to reuse those. Okay. Now, I understand there's 10,000 allotted for the dog park for a shade shelter? That is correct. I'm working on getting quotes uh, for shade structure uh, currently for the dog park. For the dog park? Yes, sir. Wow. The dog park had a lot of money spent on the dog park. I think we brought that up, too, about using that maybe instead at the sports complex, wasn't it? And We're going to leave that up to you. You see what you yeah. can do, but I think we had all talked about that as a priority of maybe moving that to the sports complex instead of the bar, the bar park. Well, if we can do it so everybody gets a little bit of shade, that would be yeah. it. Yeah. And I'll clarify well, that. I, I did after the last meeting, uh, uh, um, you know, get some input on that. It was a budgeted item specifically for the dog park, um, so we can't move those funds over to use it at Barber Street. But so the, it is budgeted this specifically. The shade shelter doesn't shade the dogs. Trees shades the dogs. The shelters, I've seen people, they'll sit there two or three hours and the dogs are out in the heat. Uh, the dogs are suffering because they, they're not the ones sitting under the shade shelters. If you want to help the dogs plant trees so they get shade. Because when, when the people at the dog park was complaining, there was trees planted in there and the leaves hadn't come on yet. But once the leaves come on, especially the small dog park, when the leaves come on, they're shade, but otherwise you're out in the sun. But the, for me, I think to help the dogs, you plant trees. The shade shelter, you're planting it for the people, and the people, they're, they're shaded, but then the dogs are out in the heat. That's my opinion. And I think we could find a better place to spend $10,000. Nothing else, spend 10000 for the playground there for people. There's room there in the, in the dog park for the playground. Okay. Thank you, Brian, um, for the conditions of the fields. It's uh, really looking better than it has in a while, and I saw pictures. I wasn't able to be there Friday night. I saw pictures of how it looked, and it looked really good. It reminded me of the old days. I mean, we had more kids a long time ago, but um, they're really trying hard to build this back up. And I think with the city's help and, and what you're doing, it's really helping, helping the league. And, and when you help the league, you're helping the kids and Sebastian, and um, so I have a poem that I, I've, has been kind of my philosophy, a hundred years from now, it won't matter what your bank account is, what kind of car you drove, what will matter is, is if you had a, an effect on the life of a kid. Um, we lost Logan Spencer, um, was a kid from our baseball league, he um, played baseball with us for several years, um, the only kid I know ever that hit a home run, of, I'm sorry, three home runs over the fence. I think the bases were loaded, if I remember correctly, three times in one all-star game in Port St. Lucie. He was, um, he was a big kid. He was um, a kid. So you know how kids can be sometimes. But he was, a, he was always respectful with me. Um, he was a great kid. And I think when we lose a 16-year-old kid, still a child um, and so I don't know what we can do um, as a community but I think we need to start paying some attention to what we can do for the kids in our community because having a 16 year old child being murdered is just unacceptable and it's you know 
So, you know, I, I really feel for his family and his dad, and um, we'll miss him. He's a good kid. Um, after that, um, I went to the splash pad with my granddaughter. It's amazing. It's amazing. If you have a chance to bring a, a little one up there, do it. Even if you can borrow a kid, it's just the the over... Is that solar panels up mm -hmm. there? Yes, ma'am. Unbelievable. It, she had so much fun, and every kid that was there was having a blast. The parents bring toys, mm -hmm. uh, buckets and balls, and they all the kids share them. It's just a, a, a special place, and I, I thank the city for, for that part. Um, and I thank everybody. I'm sorry it took too long. Do you have to be a kid to be a walk around there? <laughs> It looks weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. So I have three items. Um, so talking with the pickleballers, one of the questions they'd like considered or talked about is when the pickleball courts go in, what will be the city's designation of what we're going to call open courts or public courts, and in and around what happens in Vero as far as there's an asso pickleball association where you belong to, where they, the city has now made this partnership with the association. So if you are a member, you come and you play and it's $3. And I, if you're not a member, you can come and play, but there's designated days. So just as far as a consideration of before that gets built, that's something that we need to discuss and figure out what is going to be the operation of the pickleball court. Is it going similar to what we have here with friendship courts? You know, you come and you get to pay a fee. Is it open court time for all? So is that going to be a, re a revenue generating <coughs> court for the city? So those are, uh, I'm not looking for any input or answer, just those are considerations and questions that they're, that they're <coughs> asking, whether uh, the Pickleball, Pickleball Association of Vero would then, because I think at one point they did mention, you know, we could come up here and do a similar aspect for these courts up here, so I know it has been talked about. So that's one thing that I'd like us to try to figure out at some point, because it's going to come up. Um, and then also in and around the Pickleball courts, once we actually have plans that are presented to council or to the to the Parks and Rec, if the pickleball community will also have ability to have public input as to maybe some suggestions, things that we would have necessarily considered or moving, like can we have a bench here or is there going to be an opportunity for the public to have a certain amount of input or will it just be these are the plans kind of going with our contractor and we're really not going to necessarily move things around or, or say what our potential likes or dislikes are so i'll, I'll speak to that um due to our timeline and where we're currently at within the project as a, you know you all know i came on board in december we've tried to expedite the process i know there were some discussions prior to and at a couple council meetings people have came up and spoke about the size of the courts and had some input at that point um it's at this point, we're at a stage where we're, you know, any additional input just slows the process down. And so the city is, we're moving full steam ahead to, I can share the plans with you all, but at this point, you know, we've pretty much worked through everything and it's, you know, the, the courts are, are adequate size. There's plenty of room around them. You know, if they want to, you know, someone wants to put a memorial bench or do some things like that, we can always have those discussions. But at this time, we are kind of, we're at the point where plans have been reviewed by the city and uh, we're ready to move forward. Sure, and I think just the, the other point that people want to raise in the community is just making sure that the people that are making those decisions about the course, that they are knowledgeable and know that you know these are the standard things. I, I think the, the input is that if we're gonna do all this money and put the courts in, which is a great need that people have been asking for, that you know at the ribbon cutting ceremony walk in and they're like, well, wait, this isn't normally what you would have at a pickleball court, and now it's not something that you can't fix. So I think it's more from those standpoints of just being assured from a community that whoever's overseeing it and checking off on these things is somebody that is knowledgeable enough to say, no, you wouldn't have this versus that. Yeah, I can assure you that. I mean, they can gladly look at our contractor, which is the Mighty Sports 
uh, construction company. They develop pickleball courts all across the state. That's um, right. And, you know, the dimensions of the courts and the areas on the exterior that we heard in a couple council meetings were problem areas. So those are all addressed and there should be plenty of room on the exterior. That's right. So those were just, again, just in a public forum, those were the things that were being brought up. And then the last uh, aspect, again, about Riverview Park, there was talk and concern in the past in around the trees and preserving the internal loop, so going into the sidewalk and it's, it's maintaining of when we have craft fairs and other things as far as people parking their vehicles inside of Riverview Park. Have we ever come to a consensus as to that is allowed, not allowed, and what we're going to do to try to mitigate that or try to help that going forward? Depends on who you are. <laughs> I can, Again, I can speak forward. to that. Um, there are no vehicles allowed within the park. Um, we there a couple, you know, grandfathered in. I think the the clam bake <laughs> and the shrimp fest have a beer truck that comes in, but that is maintained by the city and and guided in on plywood. You know, we have wooden structures down that we guide those vehicles in on the city, and then they have to stay on those um, while they're within the park property. But on a general craft craft clubs, art club, those vehicles are not allowed within the park. We provide them with. Um, wagons that they can load their stuff in and pull it in okay. from that standpoint. All right, that was it for me. Um, any other ma uh, matters? Okay, uh, next meeting date is March 25th. If there's nothing else, then a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. I'm going to make a motion. I need a motion first. I, didn't oh, make motion. Motion. <laughs> oh, I make a motion to adjourn. Now you know that. You said you did. Second. There we go. Meeting adjourned. I'm just calling for it.